Okay, I've got this all lubed up, just a little bit of grease in there, a bunch of oil. This is a seal. And I got a tool here that's a Kentmore J23771. Goes on there like that. I've actually screwed some of these up on the washing machine, so uh, if you're middle of nowhere, sometimes it's better to have an extra seal. And that too makes a different sound when it's all the way in. Once I'm all done, I need to spray this with brake cleaner to get this out of the brake area. Okay, we're ready to put the axle in and take off the. Uh, protective gizmo because it's got a seal and you don't want to goof this up. You gotta kind of support it. There's the Dutchman axle in place. Went right in. Cool stuff. This is the this is a seven and a half inch forward rear axle, and the other side failed. I had a bunch of junk in it, but I've got basically a broom handle, and I've got two tie wraps hooked up to a piece of old blue jean rag. I've got a hole through each piece so it doesn't tend to come off. Let's go in here, swapping this out. The other side was way worse than this. This had just some superficial stuff. I got some brake clean squirt in there. And this is actually sloped downhill, which is a little bit better. I'm just trying to get all the stuff out of there. But this was completely just a clean so that's all the crap I've got out of there okay let's put the left side driver side Dutchman in put a little bit of oil in there got some grease try to get some of this in the outside way put some brake cleaner there on the part that I spilled and then I'm going to take the protective piece off, put this in here, try to support it so you're not putting the weight on the seal yet. And then I'm going to lift this up. There it is. I just replaced both axles. Pretty cool. And actually I removed the C-clips originally without doing this, but I cut a notch over here on the gear. But uh, to get them out, you have to go rotate this around and get one out and then goof around and rotate it another way to get this out. But you can this is on a three, 373, seven and a half inch. You didn't have to pull this out to get the C clips. Anyways, I did anyways, just because I want to look at it. Uh, if you rotate this around like this, you can lose spider gears. The spider gears got a wash on the top. There's one over here. So if you want to rotate this around, you need to like put your finger in here and, and keep all this together. So. I'm going to go ahead and put the C-clip, this is the flat side and this is kind of puffed up on the side, that's just the way it's worn, so I went ahead and moved the uh, 
O-ring, which I don't think you need. I went ahead and stuck it on the new one. But this goes on here just like this. Like that. And you gotta push that down. And I think if the drop there goes, drops in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera, see if I can show you to do the other side here. Okay, I moved the camera just a little bit, I'm trying to get the light a little bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and push the shaft from the right, the passenger side shaft. There it is, a whole bunch. And then I'm going to put the flat side like this. You don't have to have an O-ring. That's just a assembly aid that I moved over from the older ac other axles. I think it just helps put it in. And that's not in far enough. And we pull it back out. Pull that sucker out of there again. I have to turn the camera off. There it goes. Now I can go ahead and try to put the pinion shaft in. So if this is the left side, pat driver's side clunking it back and forth. It drops down into a pocket. Same thing with the right side. I'm going to move the right side back and forth. Okay, now I got both of those C-clips in. And I'm going to go through and on this particular model, I'm going to put the shaft in from here. And what I did, which isn't necessarily the greatest thing, I actually buzzed just a tiny amount off. So that will go in there. I uh, was able to get them out without doing that, but I wanted to just look at all this stuff. Now, you can see I just screwed up there. It's good to show this. If you rotate this around, this junk will drop out. If you ever do that, you can put it right back in. There's a washer on either spider gear. This is the hole that needs to go facing that way, so. I'll get this lined up. I don't want to shear my finger off. And then on this one, When I took it apart, it was like this. So that's one way I'm going to put it back. And then this is the little bolt that goes in here. It often breaks. So what you really want to do, I would replace this stupid thing. Because uh, this one, I kind of screwed up, even though I had a fairly good wrench. So I'm going to put a new one of these on there. And then it torque it down between 15 to 30 inch pounds. This has got to be snuck in over here. Um, these tend to break off right in here or sometimes in here. I have a feeling there's a fatigue failure on here because see this, it's got a lot of force here on this sometimes. So I think that's what goes on. Okay, I've gone through and the pinion shaft bolt I've gone through here and uh, blown some brake cleaner through there and I've gone through and stuck a bunch of stuff here to get most of the grease out of it. I'm going to put a new bolt in. These are made by this is one from General Motors. This is these two are from Dorman and uh, Ford makes them and then, uh, Mopar makes them. And this is one I'm using as a doorman. It's already got some thread locker on it. So, to 
put this on this one which is a three and a half seven five three this one seems like it fits right in there and where's the old one The old one looks like it's just a sl slightly longer. It's kind of strange. And it tends to go in there too. So this goes in here. There's a hole in here it's going to go into. And I'm going to use the right end of the wrench. 5 16 inch wrench, 8 millimeters. I think 8 millimeters is a few thousandths of an inch larger. But the specs I found on it looks like it's, it's completely engaged through here. Now I can't get on this little rear end, I can't get, I've got a good torque wrench. I've got a lot of sockets. I cannot get a torque wrench in here. So I'm going to go through and put something to block this stop the camera and put it in uh, gear put the brakes on and then I'm going to go through and uh, can block this or something and tighten it up okay this is the 373 rear end a 1994 Ford Ranger this was like this when I took it apart Put it back that way. Got that guy torqued up. And originally when I took the C clips off, I left the pinion in there. Was able to undo this bolt, push this one way till that notch there goes up. Then you can go ahead and this axle will go into the notch and you can pull that out the C-clip and once you've got that one out you can go ahead and rotate this one around and uh, get the other one out on the other side okay get the full thing up to edit that out